Friday, March 22nd, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Good morning, 10, 16 California time, <clears throat> slightly later than I usually start, which is 9.45. And it usually lasts 20 to maybe 30 minutes. So the stock market indexes, <clears throat> uh, a little on the defensive momentarily. Now, you might remember that we gapped up yesterday Gaps are almost always closed. I'm looking at the SPY Spider. It has a shorter trading hour, 6.30 to 1 o'clock California time, not like the E-mini, which is open 23 hours a day. So there's very few gaps, rare, in the E-mini because it never closes, almost. But the Spider's different. Nevertheless, gaps are almost always closed. And if you look at the one minute chart on the E-mini. I have a little alarm line momentarily at the price level at which the gap would be closed. So he opens, yeah, steady to here under, wiggled around on the way down, bounced, and now we bounced a second time at about the same prices. A little support forming at 520.97-ish, call it 21. And... <clears throat> That's not closing the gap yet. So I still think there's going to be a little bit more of a dip down to about uh, 2060. Not very much. If that gap is closed and you keep on sinking, that's a little bit different story and becomes very interesting very quickly because the gap up yesterday might end up being qualifying as an exhaustion gap, which means the top of a significant move usually. But we haven't got that yet. Let's see what happens if it closes the gap. And I still think that's going to happen. <clears throat> now, you guys know that I'm looking for a downside correction. It's going to be fairly decent. Now I'm expecting something in the neighborhood of a few weeks. A month and a half is probably stretching it a little, but not out of the question. Call it six weeks. And that would be down to some significant support areas for the E-mini, for example. 4,900 down to 4,800, give or take. <clears throat> the trading range basically we had in the middle of December through the um, middle of January. But there are other levels on the way down. It might stop at and turn up. This is a bull market. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. The question is, when are we going to get the big correction? You have to realize we have not had any significant correction whatsoever since October. That's five, give or take, months. That's a long time to be trending very steadily straight up or for that matter, straight down. So, uh, quote unquote overdue, yeah. Set up for a signal and or a top, actually, yeah. We had extreme overbought, but that was back in the end of January, call it the beginning of February. That was a little, it was a month and a half ago. Since then, RSI has not made any higher highs. The next rally for price higher high was not on the RSI. The next rally for price higher high, yes, but not again on the RSI. And lately, we have had another new high a few days ago, of course, yesterday included. And the RSI has still not made a higher high since when? Oh, the reference point is January 29, a um, month and a half. So we've got a significant number of divergences in the indicator uh, relative to the price rally highs. Uh, that is, I would kind of guess, to be a triple or quadruple setup. None of them have worked yet, but we don't watch these things for no reason whatsoever. So I'm very, very leery uh about uh another big move up all of a sudden that would be extreme overbought next one minute rsi but on the e-mini so we don't see gaps and a eh, little support area has formed during to yesterday and it continues so far this morning and that's around where the lows are so far well what about the qqqs nasdaq they actually did make new historic highs yesterday, but the NASDAQ QQQ gapped up. So this morning, we've come down almost to close the gap on the one-minute QQQ chart, not quite very much like the spider, 
And it has already made new highs for today. So it's coming back pretty good, pretty quick. But we're still only 80 cents higher on the day. You know, not much. Nevertheless, uh, the NASDAQ futures higher than where it opened because the standard candlestick body green. Uh, no gap to close, but you can see it dipped down below yesterday. And it's just, just stronger than heck. This stuff doesn't want to stop yet. I'm trying to justify reasons, expectations, signals for a turn in the market. And honestly, it hasn't happened yet, but I know what to look for. Next, NASDAQ uh, Q's, uh, excuse me, the uh, specific June futures contract, bumping against a little bit of resistance on this current rally um, for the June futures contract. And that's a one minute chart. So neither here nor there. And it is up about three, you know, 29 um, ticks here. Not a big deal. Possibility it'll turn back down a little bit, but we'll, we'll see. And any significant downside follow through, any new lows on any of these charts for the last, let's say, two to three weeks, that's going to be a little bit past tense. But that's going to start to cement my expectations of the bigger four, five, six week correction starting. But we haven't got it yet. OK, uh, Russell, one minute. It's just not happening. Bond futures strong today, up a point. Has been up a point in a fraction, third maybe. Uh, new highs for the last few days, several days. Looking good. Coming out of a support area. Mentioned it at the time it went into the support area that it could bounce and turn out, which it did. No signal, unfortunately. We're between a rock and a hard spot. So now I am looking for a little more follow through to the upside, probably 122, maybe even 23. We're at 19 and three quarters at the moment. Um, so that's going to be friendly to the stock market indexes, which are already not showing any signs of coming down. You generally would expect both to go up and down together. Now the bonds are cooperating, going up, and the index has never pretty much stopped much. What about the notes? Same thing. The notes are coming out of oversold condition. That's a little bit different. Going back to the bond chart, we actually were not oversold, but very, very, very close on the low that was made on March 18th. So the low on the 18th in notes was oversold. So, and at the low of a support area, right smack dab it, at it. Plus, it was at the exact previous low, give or take a tick or two, that we made on February 23. So that's a variety of other better spots to stop dropping and turn back up, which it did. And it's been now four days, and today's high is about the same as yesterday's, which was the highest since that low condition and possible double bottom. Next chart is the 10-year notes, uh, five minute. Doing well, it's doing fine. Not any problems with this chart. I think it's gonna make new highs. Next, crude oil. I have to make an apology. <clears throat> My data feed yesterday showed me on this daily data chart that I had a bearish engulfing and it was a red signal and the code was acting correctly because the code thought the high of the day was higher than the high that was made on March 19th. And again, that high was um, on the 20th and it did not turn out to be correct. So I have no bearish engulfing, which I thought I had, which would have been a fantastic signal and it would have been working, but it didn't happen. Sorry, I apologize. So no bullish engulf, bearish engulfing at the top of resistance, which would have been great. All it did was get overbought and turned down. Data, data uh, highs and openings corrected. This looks to be correct. We are slipping. We did top out in overbought condition at the top of resistance. No surprise. Coming down to a little support, which is the bottom of this trading range area. But if we dip down below that on a closing basis, below 79 on the April crude, then we probably have another leg down or another chunk down. I'm slowly turning a lot more bearish. 
I wouldn't be surprised to see 76 and a third. And it won't surprise me to see even lower than that. This had been, and so far it looks like it might be over, a heck of a good run from oversold conditions back in December 13th, down around 67. We got up into the um, 82.3 area, so that's pretty decent. But it's had problems here before. Let's see if we can't get a bearish engulfing ER cell signal very, very soon. Maybe. Uh, I still have a few days. Um, or just breaking down badly. Next, heating oil. <clears throat> no signals. Not even overbought. Just simply turned down. Not too much to say. No strategy running here. Just a simple candlestick chart. Slipping. They got We got support not only around 2.55 but also down more significantly, starting at 2.48 and down to the lows that were made uh, back in December. And that was 2.35. So looking for a little bit more weakness. Next chart is the natural gas. This is interesting. Since we made this low about a week and a half, week, a week or so ago on March 14th, uh, almost a bullish engulfing here, but we didn't get oversold. so no signal, and it wasn't a bullish engulfing quite anyway. We're back down to those lows. Today is almost the same. The rally in the last couple of days didn't really go very far, lasted a day and a fraction, and it's now flip-flop back down. That's not good. If you have a possible double bottom, let's see a little bit more strength, strength in one day, and it bumped against some resistance. So the resistance, which is basically in favor of the trend, stopped it and here we are pressuring the bottom if we end up crossing this a little alarm line that i've set here and that's about uh 1.618 <coughs> a fibonacci number how about that huh coincidence <laughs> <It's>, <clears throat> um we'll see this market break down faster quicker better and it could be pretty good the only thing is if that does happen, we're going to get oversold pretty quickly. But again, I've said this many times, a downside breakout is often when you are or very, very close to oversold. So you're going to get a little more oversold if things work correctly and then bounce up to resistance, the original downside breakout price level, and then turn back down to new lows. Next chart. On gold, we have a whopping rally the last couple of days, but it's given it all away in a day. So down 24 bucks here, already about down to the lows on the opening or closings of the last several days and pretty close to the lowest lows for the last several days. So we are a little bit of support where a bunch of openings and closings were in the past, past few days, but that's not necessarily that big a deal. The lowest lows, there are two or three of them that are close in price. And if you want to go a full course here, you got six out of seven that are in a small price range where we are right now or have been a few minutes ago at the low of the day, which we're very close to. If it breaks down on a closing basis below uh, Monday's low, looks like Monday. Ouch. Here we go. We're going to be breaking out to the downside, coming all the way down again to 2102 and maybe to the bottom of that support area now that we're above it. it used to be resistance and that would be 2070 and if that's broken then we're going to go back down to the lowest low we saw since november-ish next chart is silver i double tested the data i want to make sure it's correct we did have a gigantic bearish engulfing yesterday i have no ifs ands or buts about that at this point and we have a um er1 new short that has a small it's only one day old, green uh, trade line, meaning from the beginning of the trade to the current quote. So it's a small, good trade. I'd like to see it go down more by the close, get a little bit more elbow room on my first day down. But am I going to get a rally up to 2538 to go short because of the three R, uh, ER3 trigger? I'm not so sure. But we do have those two different strategies, ER1, scalp, and overnight. And you're looking at the overnight. I can't really tell what the scalp did. 
Looks like it eh, may have may have small loss, may have had a small profit, but not a big deal. The one is a hope now that it stays in a new short. The stop is still quite a ways away, uh, but you can't really tell unless you look at the one minute chart, which I don't have showing. So probably next week. Good, good start. Not a problem. Signal's go okay. Next, platinum. Coming down today quite a bit. Didn't get oversold, not for a few months now. I meant overbought, sorry about that. The last time it did, it topped out and was in a resistance area. But hey, that's back in end of December, end of last year. Since then, sideways trading range, back and forth, rock and hard spot. We're down here at the support level and it's not oversold. I could expect it to slip off a little bit more and maybe challenge. Why not? 873. Next. Uh, looking at hot copper. Um, new lows, week and a half, but getting into support. So a lot of trading range around a little bit lower and even lower and lower. So I kind of think the trend is up here. And all I can look for at this point is somewhere to get oversold. And that doesn't look like it's close by at all. So I'm looking for it to drop into this trading range and then get oversold. And we'll see about a buy signal at that point. Next, soybeans and the grains. Big down day was overbought the last few days. So now I'm looking for a minor downside breakout below 1180. And if I get that, I'm expecting, well, very easily, the next support at 11.73, down to 11.58 or so to be tested. But the big picture is a bear trend. This is a longer-term, significant long-term bear market, which I believe is going to perpetuate itself. Very broad, wide double top. We broke the lows, and it's a double bottom in itself, between those two highs. So a trading range indeed you could call it, breakout lasted well over a day or two and it lasted a week, including a little test of resistance, but no new lower after that. So now we've got a rally, but there's so much resistance above the market. I have a big problem with being bullish on a longer term basis. I'm looking for new short sale signals. I'm looking for a bearish engulfing because we have been overbought just recently, yesterday, and that produced today's break, sort of, but no signal so far. How about bean oil? We've got oil down uh, 186 at the moment and minor new lows for the last six or so days. So it is already a minor downside breakout and starting something. I wished it would close around the low of the day, making new lows, maybe. We'll see. Maybe I'll get that on Monday or Tuesday. But I'm turning bearish on bean oil. We didn't quite get to resistance, eh, but we did get overbought and quite a bit so. Got up to about 86, and that's a lot. No surprise. Turning bearish, looking for a test of support, 4484, and even lower than that, probably in two weeks, three weeks, next meal. Currently down on the day. Five and a half dollars almost. Did not get overbought. Resistance seems to be stopping this rally, not particularly accurately, as far as my support and resistance area is concerned. But here we are down and down to the bottom of that little band. And I think because of my overall long-term opinion on grains in a general sense, we're going to see it continue to work lower. Support is a big deal, but let's see it work down to that area first, 324, down to maybe 314, something in the ballpark. Also, 320 is a significant level to watch for. I'll put a little line there real quickly. 320, and that's good. So, next, Christmas corn. Um, sorry, sorry, that's backwards. <laughs> corn. Uh, ZC, CZ would have been Christmas. So a minor double top. I got a line there, a little resistance. 
seems to be stopping it a little so far, but we are up a fraction. No significant dip, nothing happening of any consequence that I can come up with today. Short-term bullish uh, trend and, you know, bragging rights at the moment. We bought the low of the corn market to the exact day. That's my buy signal. Green, ER, outside up day, bullish engulfing, oversold conditions, buy signal. By the way, this is a custom RSI. I know it doesn't look anything like Wells Wilder's original where I learned RSI from Wells Wilder himself. So tough. That's the way I like it. And uh, uh, that's my custom RSI. So minor friendly, sort of, don't trust it. Close to topping out, I think, very soon. Not much rally, if any, left to this. Wouldn't be surprised to see it start dropping real soon to new low ground and maybe new lows for the whole damn trend. Yeah, I got the bottom. Yeah, it's been lasting a, a month so far. Nice, but not great. Next. Um, wheat. And we got the bottom here. <clears throat> Complicated combination of signals back to back. Two days in a row. The day before the lowest low, bullish ER buy signal didn't work. The day of the low so far. Yes, that signal worked great. We are still long one ER position ER one position trade <clears throat> from the signal day, which was again on March 11th, the bottom, and we're long a, a buy for ER three on 313, one tick from the low of the day, I might add, uh, and we told you where to buy it two days earlier, but it did make new lows in one or two or three days afterwards, so there was a little loss on the trade, but not stopped out. Our yellow dotted and yellow solid lines are the stops for these two trades, which are now both profitable. And today we have a new high, period, since the bottom, period. I like it. It's running up now, closing probably above previous rally highs since the bottom. Have to be optimistic, but I can't justify being op optimistic to any great degree. Look at the problems I've got <clears throat> at higher levels. And we've already overcome one little one, a minor level of resistance. Good. So what's next? Probably 573, but I really hope I can get all the way up to 620. And then I will have had a really great signal at 520. But it's a bear market. I don't see any whopping big, huge bull bottom here. Skeptical, but have to be optimistic. So far, so good. Next, one minute wheat, looking good. Don't have any problem. I like the one minute charts to see details on how it's acting. Next, cattle. All right, big down break here. New lows for several days. Market got up close to resistance, not even quite. Didn't get overbought, not quite close. And now it's turning down. I, th I think cattle is pretty obviously going to get down to 180, 150-ish. And that's not too far away to begin with. And uh, 180 is quite plausible. We'll see what happens if it breaks below 180, 40, if it can. And we got hogs. This is interesting. <clears throat> and I'm going to compare it with... Of all things, cotton in a minute. You got 16 days from that rally high right there, January 30th, to the top of the market, exactly 16 days. When you take that little marker stick here and slide it over to the right, from the top of the market 16 days later, you have, uh-oh, another exact rally high a week ago. Now, that implies that you have a symmetrical shoulder head and shoulder top formation. Exactly symmetrical is fairly rare, but that's what they show you in textbooks. Our neckline <clears throat> is broken at one point today, but the market's having trouble staying below the neckline. Normally, when a neckline is broken and that price level was around 84.50, it starts dropping even faster. But this, at the moment, market has popped back up above its neckline. You shouldn't do that. Maybe this formation is not going to work. I'm going to have to have more strength and more time, both. Probably just more strength in particular, in order to say the pattern's no good. 
I still could get today or in the next couple of days, but it should happen very soon, a close below the neckline. And then again, here's your neckline. Now, if that happens, then this is supposed to be the downside objective of 76 and a half, give or take, which would be great. Let's watch the cotton chart in a minute. But that's just at the beginning, maybe. I don't like this little false breakout. That's what you could call it so far that happened this morning. Not necessarily a good sign if the chart pattern is going to work correctly. Okay, we'll see what happens here. Next, I'm going to have to jump to TradeStation to go to my other charts that I've been showing in Ninja and will be soon. But this is up to date and I've got my OJ chart. Remember, OJ did have a head and shoulder top. This is specifically May futures contract. First shoulder high, October 31st. We got a signal. It was great. The nearby contract at the time had much better price movement. Remember, this is the May back in November. And you're not going to be trading the May on November 1st. Probably not. Top of the formation, overbought. Last shoulder high, good. Neckline break across these lows right here, great. Minimum downside objective was very, very accurate. We ended up getting one buy signal, didn't work that well. Made a minor new low for this futures contract, but then double bottomed out with oversold conditions and the divergence in the indicator. No new lows in the indicator, but new lows barely in price. And up you went. Recently, February 8th, we got a bearish engulfing so far, the top of the move, double topped out. Now, nothing. Pennant formation. Little bull trend line basically underneath lows. Little bear trend line above the highs coming down. And you're stuck between getting pinched off in a couple of weeks. Pennant. No comments. Now, cotton. <clears throat> Um, and we'll get to others. This is a little bit out of sequence, but okay. And trade stations, cotton. We don't have any outright signals at the moment. Did get overbought February 28th. And some divergences. Highest RSI was earlier at a little bit lower prices than the blow off top. We now see cotton dropping down quite a bit. I will put a line in here to bring to into view visually, <clears throat> excuse me, a um, head and shoulder top formation. And this is your neckline. Now, sell signal on the first shoulder, only one day down, but okay. After that, you've got one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days, remember seven. You've got the top of the market, overbought condition that did top out, current turn down for how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Guess what? Seven days later after the top, perfectly symmetrical like hogs. Unbelievable that I'm seeing two different head and shoulder top formations with perfect symmetry form in the same month or two. That just doesn't happen. I've been doing this 53 years. I started charting in 1972, actually 71 by hand, pencil and paper. So, rare as a snowball in hell. Now, <clears throat> this one's working fine. Breakout, neckline break, closed below, first day down, came back up two days later, tested the neckline. It did rally above the neckline during the day a little more than I would have liked. Normally that little extra there doesn't show up, happen. But the close is below the neckline. Fine. You escaped at the end of the day with no violations of the rules of any consequence. Then down and down and down and down. And today's a new low since then. We're on our way down. Nothing wrong with this formation. I'll draw one more important line in here for you real quick here. Um, <clears throat> from the top of the market, we're going to draw a line straight down to where the neckline is and kill the extension, there's our stick. You drop the stick on the day of the downside breakout, the high of the stick, and this a little measuring stick, is the high, there's a breakout point right there. That tells us the minimum downside objective should be about 82, 86. 
doesn't tell us how long it might take to get there. That could be a little while, could be longer, but that's the price. I'm going to give you an educated guesstimate of a couple of months, maybe a little less. Bear markets fall faster than bull markets go up. Next chart, we're looking at sugar. Um, rock in a hard spot, kind of a pennant formation, bear trend lines in place. Bearish engulfing price range today, nowhere near overbought, so I'm not going to get a sell signal out of it. But a bearish engulfing Japanese candlestick all by itself implies the market's going to slip down. And I totally agree. So I'm looking for a 2115 test of a minor low a few days ago. And the next time it's down to here, 20 and a half, I think it's going down there. We might be in oversold conditions, so you could get a bounce again. Let's see what happens. Modestly bearish. Intermediate term, coffee, pennant formation, last couple of months, trend line across tops, trend line across bottoms, starting back in December-ish. Rocking a hard spot, not much too much to say. Cocoa, unbelievable. But look out, people, I keep saying, and I have to keep saying, this is Abby normal. It is unusually strong for a long, unusually long time. But again, divergences, we have the highest high in the RSI way back on February 9th-ish. New highs many, many times since then, including today's, looks like a blow off top. I have to say it. I'm expecting Coco any time now, very soon, very, very soon. But I don't know if it's going to run up another day or two like crazy to finish off this blow off situation. It just might. But it doesn't maintain this parabolic move up for very long. It could be a lot price wise. That's the best I can tell you on Coco. It's going to turn around, I believe, soon as to how high it gets in the meantime. It could be a little bit more spectacular, like a fireworks. And OJ, we've already analyzed it. You guys have a great trading weekend. Hopefully, Ninja will fix up its little ice problem, and I'll be going back to Ninja charts for the last few charts. You guys have a great weekend. See you on Monday.